CBC's David Cochran has been watching today's events and is keeping tabs on reaction in Ottawa. And so, David, what did you make of the foreign affairs minister's comments there? I mean, you know, she, she wasn't all smiles, and the prime minister, I don't think, was all smiles either. No, uh, the most telling part of her answer to Katie Simpson's question was the rather pregnant pause that preceded the answer that she gave. But you're right. I mean, David McNaughton said a couple of weeks ago Canada wouldn't participate in any kind of a celebration. And watching that this morning, there was nothing celebratory about it. I mean, Donald Trump boasted that he, you know, this was big change and he's going to be able to repatriate jobs. It was great for American industry. None of that from Justin Trudeau. Very sort of uh, somber message that we had to do this for stability and certainty and bringing up the fact that the steel tariffs are still there. Because essentially when you listen to Christopher Freeland talk, they have a trade deal. They do not have trade peace. They want those steel and aluminum tariffs lifted. That is still a festering sore in this relationship. And why they decided they had to sign this today was precisely to end the uncertainty over what was going to happen with continental free trade, in large part due to the timelines of the handover of power of the Mexican presidency, the coming in of a new Congress in the United States, and just getting this thing done. But as Katie pointed out, very importantly, a side letter to the trade agreement that ensures that similar tariffs do not get slapped in the Canadian auto sector. Now the auto sector and the manufacturing sectors are already dealing with steel and aluminum tariffs that filter through the supply chain and the value chain and affects them. The last thing the Canadian economy can handle right now is a double whammy of auto tariffs stacked on top of the steel and aluminum tariffs. So. It was a hold-your-nose kind of moment for Canada in this. They got the best deal they felt they could get, not necessarily a deal that they really want to celebrate, and that was definitely evident uh, in the body language, the tone, and the language of everything you heard from Canada today. And uh, just one more thing on that. Canada wants these tariffs lifted. Bob Lighthizer, who is Christopher Freeland's counterpart in these discussions, was asked after the signing ceremony, he goes, look, what do you need to, for Canada and Mexico to do to make these tariffs go away and and he said those are all very good questions but I'm not going to answer them all right <laughs> so, okay so there you go so that that fight goes on so what are you hearing yeah. from the opposition parties about today's signing well, they zeroed right in on the fact that the steel and aluminum tariffs are still there, and they felt that this was the leverage point that Canada had, that they could have refused to sign this uh, as a way of pressuring Trump to back down on the steel and aluminum tariffs. The Conservatives have been calling the NAFTA negotiations a capitulation uh, the entire way, ever since it became clear that the deal was largely agreed to in principle, is now being finalized. Similar messages today from Conservative leader Andrew Scheer and New Democrat uh, Jagmeet Singh. Take a listen to this. The Americans are counting their victories in what they got from Canada, and Trudeau is counting his victories in what he didn't have to give away. Today, after saying that he wouldn't have a photo op with Donald Trump until we got steel and aluminum tariffs lifted, uh, one more capitulation. The, the, the final concession, Trudeau agreed, participated in a, in a photo op and a signing ceremony, uh, even though those steel and aluminum tariffs exist. Uh, I'm actually very disappointed that the Prime Minister signed this deal. He's given up our last bargaining chip to ensure that certain elements of this deal, which were problematic, could have been dealt with. We know that Donald Trump wants this photo op. He wants this photo op badly. This was our last bargaining chip to ensure that the illegal aluminum and steel tariffs were lifted. The key word there, Andrew, is illegal, and that's what Christopher Freeland has been saying, that you can try to negotiate away an illegal or absurd act, as she calls it, that steel and aluminum from your NAFTA, NATO, and NORAD partners, somehow a national security threat. They call that ridiculous, but they've challenged this through the World Trade Organization, through the NAFTA dispute settlement uh, mechanisms. That's how they're going to try to get this done. The U.S. wasn't going to budge. There was just, that was not the method they could do this. And one other point on this. If you were to refuse to sign this today, with Trump so badly wanting it, with Peña Nieto on his way out of office in the next 24 hours or so, this is about certainty and stability. Imagine Trump's reaction and what Trump would do if you snubbed him and refused to do it. The whole approach of these trade negotiations has been to minimize damage. I have no idea how the president will react to that, but I'm guessing he wouldn't just say, that's fine, Justin, don't worry about it. Yeah, I think you're probably right. We have seen him lash out uh, at the prime minister in the past and why he wouldn't do that again. Yeah. You know? All right, David, thank you. The CBC's David Cochran in Ottawa.